Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's the morning and I am getting into my cutie right now. I am feeling like, I don't know if you can see the redness in my cheeks, so I know I am needing something in my body. That's like the most important thing is to listen to your body when you are feeling hungry. I think that helps a lot when it comes to restricting. Listen to your body. If it's feeling hungry, eat, because the longer you go without eating food, that's just going to cause issues. So while I'm chatting with you, I'm going to be munching on a cutie. And that also goes for overeating. If you can feel your stomach hitting its done point, listen to your body and be done with food. I know it's very hard. It's hard for me when I still have food on my plate to be finished. I want to finish everything on my plate. That's why I try to eat my favorite foods help first to help with that. My wife, she she does great. She can listen to her body when she's full. She can stop eating. And it's just, I am in amazement with that. I'm like, how can you do that? Because I'll sit here and I just like, I have to eat everything. It, I don't feel satisfied unless... I can eat everything on my plate, but by the point and the time that I do that, I just feel super sick. So that's something that I have to work on as well as listening to your body when it's hungry, but also listening to your body when it's full. My headspace and mindset has completely changed and I have struggled with food. I am not kidding, my entire life. I can remember a food struggle, food issue whatever it may be called, when I was probably in the first or second grade, like it hits deep. Like I have been struggling with food for so long. So the fact that I can feel that I am finally able to get through these emotions, these feelings when it comes to food, it feels really good because I know when I go through struggles, because my emotions are what affect, affect me the most with food when I am struggling the most inside with my mental health and stuff. That's when the food comes out and it, it gets me because I soothe myself with food. But I know in those times, I still remind myself, you're going to get through this. You're going to be okay. It's you're, you're going through a rough time, but you will be okay. Because that's when I start to eat more and I feel more out of control. But I'm still able to remind myself like, this is not going to be forever. And it's nice because in the past, I would have felt like this is never going to end. I'm going to be like this forever. So it's just a flipped mindset. And it's so nice to finally be in a mindset where I can remind myself that everything is going to be okay and not feel like in this chaotic mess of a mindset. I feel just so out of place and like nothing will ever change. With that being said, I thought it would be good to talk to you about why I had been gone for two weeks. It had a lot to do with being stressed and I got burned out, which led to me pretty much mindlessly eating for m multiple different reasons, but I just had a lot going on. I did a lot and I am someone who I need like a break. It's hard for me to like keep going non-stop like I have to recharge my battery and when I'm not able to recharge my battery it's it's rough I did that challenge because I the last challenge the week challenge because I knew I really needed it and it did help me in those moments when I was struggling that was probably the one thing that helped me get through all the rough times that I was going through all the stress. It wasn't like, my life wasn't like sad or sucking. It was just like a lot was going on. And when there's a lot going on, I just get stressed out. So it was nice to be able to have a week challenge and try and focus things on myself in those moments, like focus on getting 10,000 steps, like doing stuff for me because it really is hard for me to focus on myself when I have so many other things going on in my life. So I'm happy to say that I survived the month of May and the month of June. Now we're heading into July, which my birthday is in July, which makes me so excited because I get to go on vacation with my wife. So 
I definitely will recharge my battery, but it also may be an intense trip because where we are traveling is going to be hot and I don't do so well in the extreme hot weather. I've honestly been staying a lot inside since it's gotten very hot in Utah. So we'll see how our trip goes. I'm just excited to get to spend lots of time with my wife and I love it because it's just like a birthday trip for me. She she has made it a tradition to go on a vacation for my birthday. So it's really fun. It will be nice to get out. So it has taken me a minute to get back into the swing of things when I was mindlessly eating and I really have been wanting desserts after dinner, which I always like a good dessert, but I've been really craving like bread. I've made banana bread, pumpkin bread to kind of satisfy that sweet treat inside me of wanting something good. So last night, I got this feeling and I told my wife, I'm like, I really want a dessert. And for a while I had been like ordering a little sweet treat online and she knows when I'm like, I, I want something, you know? She knows what I'm saying. So she was like, are you saying you wanna order something out? Because I don't think that's, you know, the best idea. And I'm like, no, I wanna make something. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so. I made some pumpkin bread and I want to tell you a story because I am proud of this story. So I made it around like 8.30, close to 9 o'clock. I can't remember the exact time, but pumpkin bread takes a long time to cook in the oven, like an hour. So I start making it around whatever time, late at night. Then I hop in the shower while it's cooking. And by the time that I'm out of the shower, I'm just like really tired and not really in the mood to eat after the shower. I just am ready for bed by that point. So it's awesome because this pumpkin bread, it would have been gone, old me. I would have had some that night, even though I wasn't hungry, I still would have wanted to eat it. But because my mindset has changed, I was no longer feeling the need to have it. I'm just like, no, I'm tired. I'll have some tomorrow, which it is a, it's small, but it is something that I want to celebrate on my journey because I know old me wouldn't have done that. I still would have had some pumpkin bread late at night, but me, now I'm just like, eh, I'll have some tomorrow. I'm ready for bed. And because I have been wanting this little sweet treat craving, I am going to allow myself to have a dessert. I just wanna make sure when I am making it that it is going to be beneficial for my body. So I make sure what I'm putting into it is healthy. The recipe called for butter or oil, I replace that with Greek yogurt. The recipe called for either you could do sugar, maple syrup, or honey. I have this coconut sugar that I like to use. So I put that in there. The recipe, cause I doubled it, it called for a cup of sugar. I only put like four tablespoons in, not very much, because I still, I like sweet stuff and we know that sugar sweetens things up. So I'm not just going to restrict and not use sugar or something sweet at all. I don't really like honey as a sweetener. I don't really like maple syrup as a sweetener, but I, I like sugar as a sweetener. So I found a replacement that works for me and... I will still allow myself to have some sugar. I know sugar isn't the best for our bodies, but if I limit the sugar that I'm having, it's okay. I feel like for me, because I have been in the mindset of diet culture for so long and it's all that I've known that to be healthy, you can only eat healthy foods and there's a list of all these foods that are looked upon as healthy, which yes, those are healthy and good for your body, but you have to look at things in a different way because if you are going to maintain your weight, you have to allow yourself to eat foods that you enjoy. And sometimes it's not just healthy foods that you enjoy. 
I definitely do feel good when I eat healthy foods, but I also feel good when I've eaten foods that are like desserts and have chocolate in it, you know? I feel good when I eat food like that too. The thing that I have learned on my journey so far is when it comes to food, you just have to find the foods that are going to work for your body and make your body feel good and be beneficial for your body. So if you want something like a yummy tree, just find a way in making it that's going to be better for your body. So I made this pumpkin bread. I just kind of just it up a bit and did different ingredients that I knew were going to benefit my body and be a little bit better for my body and make me feel good because I know if I would have made my pumpkin bread with white flour, I would have had stomach troubles. If I would have made my pumpkin bread with butter or oil, stomach troubles. Like you just have to be aware of the things that you're putting in your body. And I think if you do that and you start making foods for yourself yourself, and stop just buying desserts, it, it makes a huge difference. I think that is the biggest change that I've made on my journey so far is just making food for myself so I know what is being put into my body. I decided that I am going to slice this up and have a little bit for breakfast. It just is looking super yummy and I always like to incorporate a carb, protein, and veggie for breakfast. So this is just looking like a perfect carb for breakfast. I don't like the crust, so leaving that for my wife. I always like to portion out my meals and make sure I'm eating a carb, protein, and veggie. In this case, I like to have fruits for breakfast. So my carb is my pumpkin bread, then my protein is my plant-based um, bacon and an egg, and then of course my cutie is for breakfast. I already ate that cutie that I talked about in the beginning, so I'm having another cutie, but I like to jazz it up sometimes. I don't eat the same thing. You know, I was on a kick with yogurt for a while, so that would be my protein, or sometimes I like to have sweet potatoes as my carb, or I will have avocado toast. It kind of just depends on how I am feeling, and then for my fruits, it will be when I'm adding the fruits into my yogurt. When I am eating, I just try to make sure everything is balanced where I'm not going super heavy on the carbs, not going super heavy on the fruit, and not going super heavy on the car or the, the protein. I know protein is very important and it keeps you full, but you don't want your whole meal just to be protein because you get nutritional value from carbs and from fruit. Like I know sometimes carbs are looked at as scary and bad, but carbs are important and they do provide nutrients to our bodies. I have experience with eating low, low carb. That's what I used to try and do and that's when I felt the worst, but now that I am eating carbs, I feel good. With my wife and I going on vacation, it brings up a lot of food anxiety for me because I do very well in a routine environment. It just is more comfortable for me. And when you are on the road traveling, nothing is routine. It is just kind of like all over the place. You, you're hungry, let's stop off at the gas station, get some fast food, you know, it's not, planned out and so I'm trying my best to be planned out as much as I can. You can't really be planned out because you can't take your fridge, you can't take your oven, your stove, you can't take stuff like that with you. So I'm doing what I can to be as comfortable as possible. But along the way, I know there's gonna be a little bit of bumps, a little bit of anxiety and that's okay. I just have to keep reminding myself, you're good, everything's gonna be okay. My wife is really supportive, so we've been going through the motions, trying to figure out what we're going to eat. We already have kind of like a food plan of what it's going to look like. One thing that I learned from our last travels in January going to Las Vegas is that driving takes a long time. And even if you plan it to not take so long, it's going to take a long time. So pack a lunch because you're going to get hungry. And I know that I would rather pack a sandwich, eat the sandwich rather than stopping off at Taco Bell or somewhere like that and eating that because they're high in sodium and it always just ends up hurting my stomach. And it's hard for me on the trip when I'm eating out so much. So I wanna try and limit 
what I'm eating out or where I'm eating out. I just, if I do eat out, I want to have certain places that I'm eating out at. But I will give you more updates about our food when we actually start heading on the road. It's coming up soon in a few days, so I'm super excited. A couple videos back, I went to the doctors and I was told that I have low iron. It was in between like a 16 to some other number ratio and I was at 17, so just barely cutting it. And he told me that I should probably take some iron. So I've been taking it, but oh, it's hurting my stomach so bad because there's always that period of time when you start a medicine and it just hurts your stomach. But it's hard because when that happens, it's triggering for me because it makes me feel so bloated and I I don't like that feeling because that's that's the feeling that I get when I binge and so it's really hard to be in that feeling. I want to avoid that feeling as much as possible and I'm kind of in a sucky situation because when I start a new pill, there's no avoiding that. I don't know if anyone else goes through that when you start a new pill, but I also have a lot of anxiety around pills. Um, I have some like trauma <laughs> with pills when I was a kid, so it's hard for me to take pills in general, but that bloat feeling, it's, it's a trigger of like binging. And so it's hard because I feel like, am, am I doing something wrong? Am I, am I eating okay? Because I feel this way. So it, it's, it's my brain is like having a hard time with it because like, I know I'm doing okay right now, but the way my stomach feels, it's, it's messing with my mind. This feeling would usually make me spiral. I don't know if you've ever been in the mindset, well, I'm already eating bad, so I might as well just spend the rest of the day eating bad because I've ruined the day. That's how my mindset used to be when my stomach would get this full. It's like, well, I've already hit this point, so today doesn't even matter. And so it's hard because my feeling, my stomach feels this way and it's like, I have to remind myself that like, I'm doing okay. <laughs> so it's been a struggle, <laughs> the freaking iron. Also, when I went to the doctors, I was looking at the labs and I pretend to know what the labs mean, even though I have no clue, but I thought I had high cholesterol, but it turns out that I don't. Well, and mine is at 173, so he said my cholesterol was good, which makes me feel good about that. Also, tested for diabetes, <laughs> don't have diabetes. He said to be at diabetes, you have to be at 5.7 and I was only at 4.9, so good there. If you made it this far in my video today, thank you so much for watching. I know it was a longer one today. I just had so much to talk about and had some catching up to do. As always, thank you so much for supporting me on my journey. Remember to stay safe, stay healthy, stay hydrated, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.